So before we start learning anything else about After Effects, the first thing we're going to be tackling is the user interface. So when you first open After Effects, you should have a layout that looks like this. Or here on the left is your project panel. This will be where you'll import all your video assets, audio assets. This will also be where your compositions will be, as we'll later learn on what those are used for. Down here is your timeline, and this will be where all your video and audio tracks, or as they're called in After Effects, layers will be. We'll learn more about that later. To the right, first we have the effects and presets panel. This will just be where all sorts of effects will be that you'll be able to use later that we'll learn about. Next is the preview panel, which we can pull down here to reveal more options for. And we'll talk about that a bit later too. Above that is the info panel, and this will just display data like where your mouse cursor is at the time, what the RGB values are for the color it's hovering over, and next to that is your audio panel, and this will just display your audio levels when you're previewing your video. And right here in the center, taking up most of the area, is the viewport, and this will be where you'll be interacting with your layers, viewing the preview of your video, so on. And one thing to note is all these panels are resizable. So we can just drag them up and down, left and right. And you can also undock them. So if we, for example, left click on project, drag it out, it'll start showing these highlighted areas of where we can snap it to. So like, if we want the project panel for some reason at the bottom, we can just drag it over here and then it'll snap into place like that. If we want to move it back to where it was, we can just drag it over here. Or if you want to undock it completely, we can just right click undock panel and that will make it its own floating panel that we can move around wherever we want. We can even move it outside the application. So right now you can't see it. We just drag it back in. And one really nice feature of After Effects has that you'll probably be making use of a lot later on is the ability to temporarily maximize these panels. So to do that, you can just hover over any one of these panels. So for example, we'll just hover over the viewport and we'll hit the tilde key. It should be right below the escape key. And now just maximize this to our full view. And then we can press that same key again to unmaximize it. And we can do that for any panel. So timeline, project panel, effects and presets. Like some of these panels you don't really need to do it for obviously, but for some like the composition panel and timeline, it can be really handy later on. And before we move on to importing any video or audio, one thing I'd like to make note of is some of the preferences that I find pretty important you should look at. To open the preferences, we'll go up to edit, preferences, general. So there's a lot of preferences here, but there's a couple in particular that I find important that you might find useful too. So the first one would be this checkbox for default spatial interpolation to linear. And this will be important later on when we're animating stuff. By default, this is unchecked, which when you start interacting with 3D layers or doing these complex movements, it can start causing issues that we'll see later on. So I just leave that checked default to linear instead. Also, this is enabled by default, enable home screen. That's when you first open After Effects, you'll have this pop-up showing like your recent projects and stuff. Uh, that isn't really something that's required and it just gets in the way, so I disable that. Another important preference would be in previews. So when you try the preview in After Effects, it's going to first cache the frames. And by default, this is off. So when it's caching those frames, it's gonna try to play the audio in real time. But because of that, it's just gonna sound like trash. So I usually leave it muted when it's caching the frame. So I'll only hear the audio when it's playing in full speed. So a lot of these other ones aren't too important right now. Uh, we'll come down to auto save. And I believe this is enabled by default, but I would just double check to make sure and you can change just to any value I want. I usually set the five minutes. Lastly, right next to auto save, we have memory. And this will specify how much RAM you're reserving for 
After Effects and how much RAM you're reserving for the rest of your computers. And ideally, you'll want to reserve as much memory as you can for After Effects. So I have 32 gigabytes installed. I'm only reserving six for other applications, so After Effects is getting 26 gigabytes. And at the minimum, you can reserve three gigabytes to other applications. So I just leave it at six for a little bit of overhead. But if you don't have a lot of RAM, then you might need to make this the minimum amount for other applications in order for After Effects to run smoothly. So of course you can look over the preferences, see what ones might be important for you. There's not too many ones that we should be worried about right now. And also one last important thing, if you ever mess up your workspace, so like say you just lose the project panel and you don't know how to get it back, we can come up to the top right here where you're current workspace will be highlighted. So right now it's highlighted with standard. Just right click and reset to saved layout. And that will bring back all your panels to where they first were when you start the application. And just as a side note, these same workspace settings in the top right can be accessed if you go the window and workspace. You can see standards right there. And in the window menu, you can see all these other panels that After Effects has as well. Some will later come back to like the effects panel and the character or text panel. So a lot of these you may never use, but a good amount for this tutorial series I'll cover. So in the next tutorial, we'll be talking about how to import media into our project and also how to preview it.